Hi, I'm Matt, and this is going to be my what's in the bag video. I've seen people doing these before, and they're all over YouTube, and figured I might as well make one myself. I do have people ask me, it's just certain things what I wear, so why not? So I'll just start with that kind of boring stuff first. Um, for my jock, I have the Warrior Ritual 1 uh, Pro Jock. I've had this for about two, almost three years now, I believe. I did a review on it on my channel, so if you're interested in this or the next one, I say check it out because it goes, does go in pretty good detail. I really like this and I'm really happy with it. The straps are getting a little uh, stretched, as you can see, and so now I have to basically do the straps all the way up, all, like, all the way across to make it really tight, but it's not bad for three years. Uh, there's a ton of dents on it, as you can hopefully see here. So it has been used quite a bit, but it's done me very well. Um, you can also see how the is kind of like stuffed in more, and that's just by being used and being squished down. But yeah, I'm very happy with this. So that's my jock. Um, for my knee pads, I have these Ritual 2 uh, Pro knee pads. These came with my Ritual 2 goalie pads. Now. You might be wondering what these are, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, I had Bauer Supremes, and I had a pair of Reebok Pros, but because I got these, I figured I would just move on from those and sell them and try to grab other stuff. And I kind of regret it, especially the Bowers, because I've had some issues with these. Uh, the inside's really, I love how thick this is and how soft it is, but the protection up here is, was lacking. Um, so, what I did was I actually cut the cuff off of a pair of uh, player gloves I didn't like, so as you can see there's nothing here, and that piece is now right here. So just for added protection, I felt that if I got anything directly on, like head on to the knee, uh, it would really hurt, and I would be feeling it, and something you really don't want to feel, and these weren't doing a good enough job, so I added to it. Now I will be getting the 1S knee pads when they come out. I liked how they had the curved composite up here and right here, and just how it had deep, uh, I think pour on XD in it, as well for added protection and for comfort. So I'll be getting those, but they're not out yet. So I'm currently waiting on those. Um, as for if I take these, I do. I also made a video for that. No matter what I did, no matter how tight I made them, or the amount of tape, if I didn't put a sock over them first and then use a garter belt, they would always slide down. So I use sock, garter belt, and tape just the thigh, and they stay pretty good in place for that. So next, I have a pair of Bauer uh, Pro, they're Supreme Pro or something like that. Uh, Rangers, as you can see, from the Goalie Crease. These are supposedly the same as the Pros get. They're not NXGs, and you can tell by the back padding and just how like, the internals are. They're a little more simple and not quite as uh, like feature rich as where you buy top of line stuff that isn't made for pros, they sometimes have different foams and just different materials everywhere. Like the NXGs have, I think, this like hexagonal foam, hard foam here and this is just normal. Um, these are okay. I'm kind of torn about them. I might be moving on from them. The protection's really, really good, but the length of the thigh is a little too long in the sense that uh, my, when I go down, this inside part is on the inside of my knee wing and it gets in the way and it's pretty annoying. The other issue is because my warrior jock is so big, uh, it. because of the size of this, it completely bulges out down here and it caused the pants to actually rip along the seams here. So I had to go in and sew those back up. And since then it'd been okay, but yeah, when you're wearing it, it's really, you can really see how it bulges out. And it's, it's not that it's uncomfortable, but you can tell the pants aren't big enough in that sense. Um, I'm also looking for something with a little higher waist uh, and rib protection just because my chest sometimes pops out. So I'm thinking maybe a custom pair of Brian's, but we'll see with the new CCM uh, Flex Shields because they does say have the highest waist they've ever done. So we'll see how that goes. Normal suspenders, suspenders. I, uh, I actually wear this really, really loose just to try to keep my chest protector in. And so this isn't really done up. And I, I, I tie it, but I don't really tie it. It's just there to, to tie the string, basically. It wouldn't make any difference. Um, the one thing, the reason I, well, one of the reasons why I bought these, actually, is I really like the back of the leg 
padding, like the butt padding here. I felt it, this part to be more substantial than the Reeboks that I tried on. So I went with those. And I did really, really like the Rangers colors because it kind of matches my team. And so that's, yeah, that's it for the pants. These are, I think they still have a couple there. So if you're interested in something like this, call them. I think they have Chicago colors. I'm not positive though. But not a bad pant. The material on it is slightly different than the stock uh, NHG material too. It feels almost coarser. Uh, I'm not sure if it's more durable or not. But that's a bit of it for that. I guess next we'll go to the next boring thing, which is uh, skates. Uh, I just have one 100s. Uh, I got these for a pretty good deal. And I was in 195s, and these were a big upgrade for that. Um, I did so in my own lung Lundquist, Lundquist strap in the back, but uh, I pulled out. I used it only twice anyways. I didn't really feel it made the difference I was looking for. And it wasn't something I really wanted. I just wanted to try it out anyways. Uh, both of my internal vertex cutouts are cracking, but they're fine. Like the protection is still okay. Um, not much besides the skate or stock, stock steel. Sharpen at 3 8, but all the ice here is pretty bad, so it's you're either a hit or miss. You get good ice and you get good grip, or you get over grippy because everything's slush. So, well, from that. Next is my helmet, and this is a Hackva 2609, I believe it was called, or 2608. Uh, I've had this for a while now. Um, I recently just got new foams because the foams are falling out of it and super hard, which are Maltese. I'll go into that in a second. Uh, this mask has done me pretty good. I did a small video of it before because I do do an interesting uh, uh, throat guard protection. Just the way I tie it in, it actually goes underneath the mask here, comes out the top, and that way this part can never go inwards. And it doesn't really do that much. Like it's much less than most other ways to tie it. Um, you may be questioning why I have tape down here. So this is an iTech throat guard, and I've had it for probably over 10 years and it's cracked all the way up here um, and like right in the middle there coming up to this hole and I figured at the time we didn't have a replacement and so I just taped it up to see if it would hold and it, it helped so it's been like that for over a year now with the same tape and it makes no issues for me so that's always good now so as you can see you got the Maltese in here hopefully that shows up now I put this in pretty recently, and I have to say it's it was a huge pain for me. I kind of screwed up a couple times, and just getting everything to fit was kind of awkward. I have a weird shaped head where the back of my head is a lot taller than the front part, so I really was feeling it back here until I got everything settled in. Um, and the other issue is, if you can see how thick, maybe I'll show it too, how thick the black pieces are, and the spacers are on the like right along my temple. Uh, it's because I have a kind of a skinny head, I'm guessing it is. And I just had, that was the only way I could get them really, really snug. Uh, I too have the uh, Monster Cool Sweatband. And this thing is kind of cool in the sense that it gets really soft when wet and it just absorbs water and absorbs water, absorbs water. The weird thing is I feel that my sweat drips off of it. And so I'm not totally thrilled with the performance of this yet. We'll have to test it some more, but because of how smooth it is and when it's wet, it's really soft and smooth. I feel like my sweat just doesn't get stuck into it and just comes down my face anyways. Whereas a terry claw, because it's like almost not softer, but fuzzier that the sweat kind of gets stuck in the fuzz. I haven't tried a shams. I wanted to, but when I grabbed this, well, it came, I got it with the, the padding. Uh, I figured that's it for that. Um, so I'll have to look into this a little more. I'll do a little cut in here right after this that shows how much water this takes, just how it can just continue absorbing water, which is really pretty cool. But again, I think the sweat just doesn't really get stuck in there and just slides right out, which is unfortunate. All right, so next I'm going to do pads. And I get a lot of questions about these because I do wear different sets. I switch back and forth quite often. And they're very different. Um, so, the two pair I wear are Warrior Ritual G2 Pro Returns, made for Mike Condon for the Montreal Canadiens, and a pair of Coho 588 Pros. Uh, these ones were the ones made in Canada. 
These are 35-2, and these never have a sizing. But uh, if you stick them up, they're pretty close on the knee. This one's a little higher, so I would say these are about 34 and a half, about that. Uh, my knee lands actually right on the top, whereas this one is right in the middle. Um, they're very, very different pads, if you couldn't tell. One is the lightest on the market, which is the Warrior, and the Cohoes are very, very heavy. Now, the reason I like wearing two different sets of pads is I feel if I wear one set for too long, I tend to make, I fall into bad habits in using the pad strengths or just how they play, and it causes some bad goals and just does that. And as well as, I don't think every pad is perfect or there's a perfect pad for every situation. Um, because the Warriors are so stiff on, second, because they're so stiff on the side and just there's no bend in it, that's me bending the pad. Like, you can bend this a bit, but not much. And even then, when you really, you don't really get much in there. Um, there's no internal break here, and there's no pull down loop here. Um, but you can see that there's no pull down strap to make it bend inwards because this is so stiff. And that's kind of like how I like pads. The boot's actually pretty soft which I was surprised at um, and I'm happy for because my other stick pads didn't have a soft boot and I didn't really like it. So, but anyways, so because this pad is so square and so, so stiff and such a block, um, you tend to get, I tend to fall into like just using a blocking style more. I don't really like that all the time. Like it's good in your game, but when you rely on it too much, it becomes bad and you end up letting the goals. The other thing is, because these are so stiff, I have a harder time covering holes uh, when I'm doing a BH or all, as well as because this is so flat and doesn't stick out at all, pucks that usually hit here, as you can see by here, go in. They don't really get stuck on the pad where it just gets stuck under your pad. The toe does a bit, but here it's usually if it hits the inside when you're going down, it's not flush, it goes in and it's kind of bad. Um, yeah, but just the, like, it's almost hard to explain unless you really start using it, but in the reverse VH, you kind of get stuck because they're so stiff, whereas these ones let your leg move a little more freely. But at the same time, I like the stiffness because I can do certain things. For example, in the reverse VH, I like how it's basically a board because I can use my pad as almost a second stick. It just blocks passes out from the middle while still covering what I want it to cover. So that's really nice too. Um, you can definitely feel the lightness on these compared to the Cohos. Your legs feel faster, but at the same time, I don't think I've ever missed a save because my legs weren't moving fast enough in the Cohos. I never felt that. You can definitely feel the weight difference, and they slide differently. I wouldn't say these slide better, maybe a little bit quicker, but they slide very differently, and you can feel that. In the Cohos, it's more of, you can feel how round they are. You can feel how flat this is. And it's pretty interesting going back between the two. Um, there's some things I like about this. The boot design is pretty ingenious. Uh, Smith did a really good job on that. Uh, these ones never had a boot riser. And that was actually the reason why, well, one of the reasons why I bought these versus the other pads. Uh, the other pads had about a boot riser with that on there. And with that, my knee would have been above the actual knee stack. And even then, these are almost too small, but they were, I really wanted them and they kind of fit. Um, I took off most of the, leather straps, just need to use a normal Velcro strapping. These are, you can tell, kind of like, they're not the best. The new system is so much better, it's amazing. Um, I do, also this sort of angled push down for your knee doesn't really do much in my opinion. Your knee is usually right here and here, and there's actually usually a gap, and this was supposed to relieve that gap, but I found just pushing down on this all the time anyways. Um, I do love how this is solid and doesn't move. Well, it moves out a little bit, but not a lot. I really like that design. It's a great job. But the new interior for the G3s is pretty awesome. Um, one thing I did take out was the uh, uh, pillow inside that just goes in the leg channel. I'm not going to open this up because it's a warrior leg channel. And I took this out because when I put it in, I tried to actually start playing like Condon does, where his pads are really loose, and basically the knee was always on the ground and I couldn't get it to work, but I put this in too to try it. And I found I was getting really, really bad ankle pain with this in. And I also find if I keep the uh, bootstrap too loose to the heel, 
I get that ankle pain again and it's kind of frustrating. So it has to be a pretty, not super stiff, but it still has to be there in order for me to not have that ankle pain. Um, besides that, I guess that's about it for these. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Uh, so now we're going to go to the cohos. So the reason I got these was I really, really wanted to try uh, the fur. Probably saying his name wrong. I'm sorry, but that, this Reebok CCM style pad with like the big wide like channel with basically nothing in there. And I would have preferred something stiffer, but this is kind of what was there. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna try it. And they are pretty. If I can fix this for a second, so it doesn't interfere with each other. They're pretty soft. Like the top's pretty soft. The boot is actually really stiff. But it doesn't bother me at all. But the thighs are really soft, and this break, you can really tell it when you're wearing it. Um, especially compared to my Warriors. And like I said, I always wanted to try this because I saw people wearing it. I saw them with the straps barely done up, and just like, I really like how it completely covers your leg. It comes really close to it. And I, I, yeah, I just, I wanted to try it really bad. I found a decent deal on these, grabbed them, and was really, really happy with them. Like I said, they feel completely different than the Warriors, which is very obvious, but they're, I think they're really great. I still probably would have liked a stiffer thigh, but it is it is what it is, and I actually would have probably gotten a shorter thigh too. I'll show both of these, because I forgot to mention that. On both of these pads, the thigh rises, in my opinion, are too, about an inch too big. I would like them a little shorter. I'm not all for cheating. I prefer to get better than to use equipment to make me better, and it's just a personal thing, um, but I do wish they're a little smaller. With that said, I really, really just really like the style of these pads. I like how the Warrior kicks out rebounds more than this one does. This one's almost a little dead. I kind of kill some pucks. But the Warriors, most of the things go out a lot further. The stiff boot, I don't have a problem with at all, surprisingly. Um, and I say that because I had issues with stiff boots before. But this, I don't have a problem. I never actually noticed it. And it's everything about this pad I really, really like. I like how the padding comes down on the skate more, whereas the Warriors it doesn't really. Your skate's basically exposed by the way the boot is. It's like a tabletop boot. And I, just, I kind of, I like straight pads, but using the, the curved pad is also pretty nice as well. Um, I don't really wish it had a knee, inside knee part, just because I don't really need it. I do wear the knee pads under them, so it's kind of big and basically not done up and it doesn't really do much for me. Uh, the straps are pretty useless too, but because it doesn't have a big calf, like a lax of calf strap, I do have to do them up or else it feels very strange. Um, so that's about it for the pack of People, people thought these kind of went away for a while. I was just using Warriors and when I, right now I'm playing pretty good in the co so I'm sticking with them and playoffs are like one game away, so I don't really want to switch. But usually I just go back and forth depending on how I'm feeling. Um, kind of sucks that these don't match any of my stuff, but I don't really care because I really like how they play and feel. And honestly, if I was to buy a fully custom set coming in the future, I kind of, I do like the 1S, but it might be a Coho, just I would have some things different, like probably a single external break and maybe a single internal, I'm not sure. But um, I'm really happy with these, I really, 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 really like these. But they're very different, I like wearing the different pads. It's almost an interesting challenge to say. Um, next, we'll go to my gloves. And so we also have a Pro Return Warrior Condon G2 blocker. Um, and I have a Pro Return e double break, sorry, uh, not single cuff, what's it, double cuff, I guess? Anyways, uh, E-Flex Pro with a practice palm. Now again, it doesn't match, but oh well. Now, I love the performance of this blocker. I did a couple reviews on it, especially check it out. I was having some issues with the finger protection here, and I don't like how it's so open here. And the internal padding broke down on me twice. Um, so, yeah, I like the blocker, and I really like the performance, and I like the hand position, actually, because it's higher up than the other one I have. But, because of that, I kind of was happy to try something else out. And I'll get that to that in a second, but it does match my pads very well. So there's that, and it 
13. Um, so now to my Eflex Pro. I have a ton of problems with gloves in the sense that uh, Eflex Pro and the Vaughn 5500 and the 8800, if it's not that break, I have a lot of uh, pain in my arm when I play and try to close it. I, I don't know why, just every time I try to close, my whole arm just starts to hurt. And the only one that doesn't do that is the Eflex. Now, I got this pretty cheap because it was a practice palm, and I actually like practice palms more than regular. I'm not the greatest catcher to begin with, so that doesn't really help because I can't close it all the way, but I, do, I, I don't like feeling anything in the palms. I've worn too many gloves in the past where I kind of flinch on a shot, and I have to work, and I, I'm a, I work with my hands every day, and I really need them, so breaking them or even getting injured from a shot isn't going to cut it. Now, so this glove, hopefully this will show closes to about there, which isn't all the way as you can see. Now, I have done multiple break-in methods, time and time again, about six times now, and I can't get this broken in because of the materials down here just hit each other. And I could take it in to get fixed, but it is what it is. Um, I grabbed something else because of that, but I really do love this glove, I love the break. Maybe if I'm unsatisfied with the next one, I'll show it. I'll take this in somewhere and see if I can trim this down a bit just so it will close easier. But anyways, that's it. Um, go to the new ones, which I kind of tease in videos. So another completely non-matching set from what the rest of my equipment is, but there's a pretty good reason of why I got these. Um, these are Breeze Gala Pro Returns from the Gola Crease, practice palm glove, and it looks like a Reactor 600 slash NXG. It's not, I'll explain that in a second. And just this is a pretty straight up Reactor 6000 uh, blocker. Now, I was saving up for a 1X catching glove. I really like the feel of it, and I was really interested to try the new, uh, try the new stuff out. And I, I honestly like the graphics and the materials. But the thing is, I wasn't positive that I would be able to get the glove I really wanted because I didn't think I'd actually be able to test the palm I wanted and stuff like that. So I didn't want to go in and spend 600 or whatever they are retail and be worried, and not be totally satisfied. And so these went on sale and I'm a big Briz fan. My girlfriend likes Briz Gala. Just happened to say that, okay, we're going to grab them. Um, I'm really like the blocker too. It's a big reason why I got the glove. And the reason being is I mentioned I had index finger issues with pucks ramping up and this solves it with how thick and protective this is. I also like the fingertip protection here. It's not as good as Brian's and I understand that but it's better than what I had. Uh, the balance of it is a little lower, the hand position is lower than what I'm used to. So as you can see I actually was getting a lot of pucks at the bottom. So I gotta work on that. So this won't be used in playoffs because I gotta get used to that before I really start using it. Pad wrap might come but we'll see. I don't want to spend the it costs like a hundred bucks to get just these done because I need blue and red. So we'll see other options there. But anyway, that's a blocker. I like that. I'll show you what I mean about uh, finger protection in a second. The catching glove is I'm really happy with this. I was kind of nervous of it first. It looks like a reactor design, which it is. But it's a one piece cuff. It's kind of an NXG backhand. So what this really is, is this is a Vaughn 5500, maybe an 8800, skinned and modified to be a Bauer glove. Briz always wore the 5500, I believe, or 8800 when he was in Phoenix and when he started in Philadelphia, went to Bauer and basically wore the same glove. Now, this also practice palm, but it closes easier. It doesn't close all the way. So I'm still trying to see if I can work that in a bit, but it definitely closes easier than my CCM and I just got it. Um, it's pretty interesting to play with, it feels lighter. I just really like the feel of this glove. It, I really, really like it. Um, and because it is kind of a Frankenstein glove, I kind of like that as well. Again, if this palm has, causes me issues, well, I'll take it, maybe I'll take it in and get it altered, but for the time being, I'm catching a lot more in this than I do in my CCM. And I'm really, really, really happy with this. And I just say, I really like that break. This is, I was nervous because I tried a normal NXG on it, 
hurt my wrist and hurt my forearm with this. I can close it normally and it doesn't bother it whatsoever. So that's a good bonus. Now I'll show you really quickly what I mean about the finger protection. So hopefully you can see that. Pucks would ramp up in here and it really pinched like my thumb, my index finger, and it kind of was annoying. Also, okay, before I take this off, as you can see how open the fingers are too, the reactor does have a nicer job, does a nicer job of closing that up. I should say the new G3 blocker does fix the index finger protection, but I'm not in the market for a brand new glove at market full price. As you can see, the protection on there is much better. And I actually didn't find this to be interfering with my stick play at all. And you'd think it does, and I played and nothing happened. Um, as well, these are still open, but it's still got that tip here. And this tip is still there, which is nice. I could even sew it down more if you're closer, but it's better than what the Warrior offered. And feel of it's really nice too. We'll see where that goes. Uh, this stick I haven't used because I use sticks until they literally break. And I haven't gotten to that point yet. I have a couple of videos of what sticks I do use, which is a Vaughn 7800 foam core and a Warrior Swagger, which is basically the backup and dying. This is actually pretty cool. It's a foam core Warrior with a composite hot piece, but I haven't got to it yet. It's a Biron Pro Return. So next, we're getting into one of my newest pieces. Well, not newest anymore, but uh, one of the pieces I was most happy with getting. I had a ton of issues with my chest protector in the past and was waiting and waiting and waiting until the 1S. I saw the 1S in person and was honestly really disappointed in it. And once that happened, I called up Brown and said, I'm building this to spec and I'm getting it so I don't have to buy another one. This is a Bobrovsky spec, uh, Brown, I think it's a 2300 because of the one small line of blocks here. I actually wish that was too, a thicker block because it kind of folds up once in a while or folds inwards and it's kind of annoying. So I wish that was thicker, but it's not that big of an issue. Now, the Brabovsky spec is thicker foams, plastics, segmented shoulder floors to be NHL legal. Uh, this cap piece is smaller than the normal ones, NHL legal. Everything about it basically fits for the NHL. The reason I did that is I do face some pretty hard shots as well as I don't want to break down anytime soon. I got the single piece chest guard because I figured, why not? Um, I figured if I'm getting as much protection as possible, I might as well do that. The thing I really liked about this and why I bought it was because of the awesome uh, like armpit protection here, the side protection, and this like, the coverage is fantastic for that. I had a lot of issues where I'd go into the reverse VH and get smoked right here and just be in tons of pain. Haven't really felt anything with this. You can still feel the odd shot, but it's a different type of feeling. It's not that you got hurt, it's the not. It's like uh, you can feel the chest coming into you and the air coming out of it. And no, that doesn't mean this is a bad fitting, it's just certain little spots like down here you can sometimes feel it. It doesn't hurt at all, it goes away like that and you're, I'm not worried about a shot. Uh, I've taken absolute rockets off this, like straight in the chest, and it just bounces right into my glove or down. It's fantastic. Don't have to worry about shoulders getting hurt anymore. Arms are great. They're not the most mobile things. I'll do a video of these in the future, uh, just in the future, like as in a few days, to just show you the different uh, customization options back here and what you can do with them and just how it fits. One thing I did get, I was gonna buy a Maltese neck guard, but opted for the built-in brown neck guard. I'm sure the Maltese is a little bit more protective, but I really like how this sits in the chest. And with my helmet, my dangler, and this neck guard, it's pretty solid protection there. So I'm really happy for that. And this, I've just, I've been so happy with this. It was expensive. The build time was three days, which was ridiculous. Um, like I, I can't believe how fast it got to me. But the build quality is really good. He's great for support. I just wish my I built the sides a little lower just because they kind of pop out of my pants. Um, but like perform, protection performance wise, I'm so thrilled with this. My mobility did go down a bit because it is stiffer and heavier. 
It's really hot too. It's very heavy and really hot. So if you're thinking of, if you want something lighter weight, this is not what you would get. But I wanted something that was bulletproof and I wouldn't have to worry about shots anymore. And I don't. This, I really, really like this one. I would absolutely recommend one. They are more expensive, especially with the uh, Rogowski spec and getting some little tweaks. But um, I think it was worth every penny. I would have spent 600 on a brand new 1S. I spent more on this to get it fit to me and to ensure it's as padded as I like it. So I'm really happy with that. Finally, just because, just in case people are wondering, these are my team jerseys. So you can see, match the Warrior pads really well, the Rangers pants really well. Uh, number 60 for Jose Theodore. And that's about it. Unfortunately, the Cohos and the Briz pads gloves uh, don't match this, but I don't really care that much. I just go for whatever I feel comfortable with and whatever the performance is. So that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking through all this. It was quite a lot, but I like seeing these videos, I like doing them. Fortunately, I have a lot of gear, so it takes a while and I talk about